Hey guys, it's Matt from Oakley Thompson here again, and we're going to go through the Viper Pro today. We're just going to go a quick overview. If you watch our last video, this might be a little bit of a repeat, but repeating is not bad is what I found. This is our main run screen on a Vape Viper, our startup screen. Up here, you'll see numbers 1 through 8, so that's our 8 sections, and that's where we can set our look ahead times and modify the sections. Right here we have degrees, headings, and then can mile per hour, two fan speeds, and then here is your main map screen. And on the right here we have a menu for which map we want to do, the RX coverage, scout or sectional control maps. Down here we have some option buttons to increase or decrease the map, reverse sense, plus or minus, pans, etc. DD would be your tallies for your total field volume and field acres area. Right here is our slingshot tab and then down here we have our product nodes. So on this one we only have three, three tanks, so three dry fertilizer tanks and if you wanted to do any more you could get two extra two controllers here for anhydrous or liquid control. We have our main product control menu here, our GPS tab, our packing pressure settings, and then the menu tab. So we're going to start out here today and go through the menu tab. As you see here, you have a few different options. About, we'll show you your Viper software information. You got web, a setup tab, file maintenance for maintaining the files that are on the system, and a start job tab. We're concerned about setting up, so we'll hit the setup tab. And again, here you got registration keys, maps, local, com ports, product control, light bar, sectional, and menu. As a default, some of these will be set up, and you only have to do it once. If we go through them quickly, section is where you would set up your drill, and that's a major screen. Light bar is where you'd set up an on screen light bar. Product control is where you set up what type of system it is, and it'll be a CAN system on this particular machine. And if you hit OK, that's fine, it'll take you out. But anyways, we're going through setup today, and we're going to be worried about our sections. So we're going to make sure that's set up right. So you can see the CETA configuration, you can have a different, three different track types. Your conventional, so a front steered mechanical front wheel assist tractor, a track system which will be a two track system like a John Deere or a Cat Challenger and then an articulated tractor. We're seeing an articulated tractor today so we'll fall through with that. The seed cart in front of drill option allows you to model it so the seed cart will be in front of your drill, a toe between cart and it will compensate for where your drill is in space based on your GPS data. We'll hit next and here you can see is our tractor setup for our GPS receiver and our pivot points. We see our from our pivot point to our receiver we're forward 65 inches, pivot point to our front axle is forward 78 inches, and our pivot point to our rear axle 68 and pivot point to rear hitch is 119. Making sure that all this data is correct ensures that everything is going to work properly for your sectional control and it'll be in the right space time coordinates. Hit next, and we're gonna. If we picked up a toe between cart, this is where you would model the cart, and you do pivot point to front hitch to the pivot point, and the pivot point to the rear hitch. We do not have that today, so we're just gonna model the drill in there. And what you're concerned about is your pivot point to your front hitch measurement, and your rear gang or your rear openers to your pivot point, and they're forward of the pivot point here. Eight sections, all seed hawks will be eight sections, and if you hit next, this is where you'd set up each individual sectional width. Here we have a 60 foot drill with eight sections, and you can see the eight different sections. Hit next once more, and this is where you would make sure it's mapping properly. As the default, the Viper sets it up properly, so we don't have to hurry, worry about that, and we'll just hit OK. And OK will save that data and bring us back to the main screen. So there is how you would set up the drill itself. And next, we're going to go to the 
I guess next you would have to ensure that you have GPS so you can go menu setup and com ports and that would make sure you have GPS on your machine so on this one it's 1152 8N1 generic GPS and it's out getting outputted from a uh, Starfire 3000 receiver so that will just be a check mark and you gotta make sure the outputs on the Starfire receiver match up to what we're receiving in on that can com port our product control tab is where we'll go next and we'll hit the first top button here and this is our section cals so we got to make sure that we have all these checked when we're running the drill so as of default with openers and just the cart you'll have all your meter gates and all your openers if you had extra product control nodes you would have liquid valves and vapor rows and you'd also have to make sure those are checked you can hit OK once that's done and our next tab will be our miscellaneous tab here. This is where you set up the speed into the switch box and right here a thousand will just pull GPS speed and on all the latest software it is there if it's older than 2013 you may have to you may have 780 some in there and that'll just be to get the proper speed into the switch box. We got self-test speed and then alarms and boom capacities and load cells, I guess, for future use. If you hit next, it's going to show you our product versions or our node versions on all the nodes online. So if we remember the previous video, there's three product nodes, a switch box node, drill node, and an SCT node. These versions are current as of spring of 2014. Um, talk to your local dealer if you want to make sure you're up to date. We'll hit OK there. And then our third place here will be our kind of going to go through our fan calibration because there's a couple of pieces of important information here. Cal must be set to 2. Our low and high limit is when our fan will alarm. Our current values are what the fan RPM is right now. And alarm is checked on or off. And what's the importance of alarm? If you have alarm on and you don't have your fan spinning over 1500 RPM, it will not turn on your meters. So, this would be one step if your meters are not turning on, make sure you're over that lower fan limit. It also does show you a warning screen on the main screen, but I know if you guys are like me, you hit that OK button pretty quick and don't even read it, the warning sometimes. On home screen display is if it's if it's checked off, it'll show up there. So we can hit OK on that. The next part here is where we can go into product node selection. And there is going to be three product nodes on this drill because we're just dry and it's just out of the air cart. If we had a fourth, you would have a liquid one or a fifth if you had anhydrous, depending what you have on your rig. But right now we're going to be worried just about the dry product nodes. So I'm going to go through one. All three tanks should be similar. If you're doing a anhydrous or liquid, liquid setup, it'll be slightly different. We can cover that at another time or on an individual basis if you call us. So let's hit OK on this. The top portion of product one will go through some alarm setups and your off rates. So right here we can see our off rate percentage is 30%, so it won't alarm at us until we're 30% off our target rate. If you're a little pickier, you can change that. 30% has been the default for Raven for a number of years. Low tank limit and low limits. Bin level alarm, so your ultrasonic sensor there will pick up if it's low. Bin pressure alarm, we have turned off, but if you had it on, it would pick up if you pressurize tanks on properly. Decimal shift and zero shutoff, so just zero shutoff if you're going to be going no speed. Gate alarm is on, so if something goes wrong there, and smoothing will be on. The bottom half here is where we really set up our meter. The top two numbers here, area per hour and volume per minute, will be counting if you are going. And then the rest up here is due to do with your meter and your meter here. So if we go through them quickly, our rate cal 
is the pounds per acre that we want to apply. So here it will be 100 pounds to the acre we want to apply. Our rate plus or minus will be that amount we want to go up or down. So in this case it will be 10 pounds to the acre that we want to change the increment by. So if we have to go up or down on the tank. And our meter cal here will be our 60 targets per revolution on the Raven motors for a seed hawk cart, which is default, so we won't have to adjust that number. And this RPM will show us the RPM based on that 60 targets per revolution. So computer can calculate that for you. Cal rate here is a calibration weight. This is pounds per revolution. If you guys are familiar with flexicoil oils, it would be pounds per 100 revolutions. That's basically telling you if you do one revolution on the meter roller, how many pounds you are outputting. And that's how the rate controller, or how the Viper, or the product nodes, I guess in this case, will tell you if you're outputting the right amount of product by the 60 targets per revolution and this pounds per revolution or pounds per revolution number. Our valve cal here is 43. That's just for PWM valve, min PWM and max PWM. 253 is the maximum the pulse width modulated valve can open up to get the maximum RPM. Presets 88, PWM frequency 60, that's just always there. And then these other numbers will be just set up there for valve delay and PWM. And by default, they're all zeros, and that will be good enough for what we're doing. The lower number there is telling us what that ultrasonic sensor is going to be reading. And we see right now our tank is empty. So that's no big deal. The bottom here is our pressures. So if it was a sprayer, this is kind of hierarchy stuff from a sprayer. There would be two pressures. Um, our application here will be what type of valve it is. If you guys are familiar with a Viper 4 and a sprayer, you might see aim command here or PWM. For granular application on these motors, it's PWM close. So if you were doing a liquid or something else, you would see that it would be something different. So we're going to go through and we could click on this area to change any of these. And here you can see it pops up and you can kind of look at it a little differently. Calibrate your bin sensors there. Um, you can go to the next screen and see the other ones there. And whatnot. Go through them and just see. Edit. This is where you'd edit it. You can hit OK to go back. And here is where you edit these ones. OK to go back. You can check them off. We saw the valve type here and the pressures if you could do that. So once we're done doing that for each tank, you could kind of check and make sure those are all right for you and all three tanks. So if you just end up calibrating, you'd make sure the calibration number is pushed. There's a video out there already for calibration and stuff like that. So once that is done, we just have to really set up our sectional control for going seating. So we'd hit this tab here, and this will show all your look ahead times for your sectional control. We have them set here as a good starting point. You turn on override seconds and you turn off coverage percent. And then make sure this is all set up so it maps to your switch box properly and we'll have aggressiveness on as a default. We can go here and we see there's where our target rate comes into play and our up down arrows. This will only be adjustable in the run screen so once we start a job you'll be able to see how that starts up. So once this is all done and we're ready to we're confirmed that our calibrations are good and everything looks good here. We can show you how to start a job and just watch the next video for that. So every day, the steps to check would be for your, make sure your cal weights are right and everything and we'll go from there.